opens a transparent trade in Europe for cutting EU red tape. Europe needs reform. President Hollande, uh, Chancellor Merkel, uh, many have said uh, today that your joint appearance uh, is historic because it shows uh, that the Franco-German engine of Europe is still powering on and we have a radiant future in front of us. But don't you think that this is at least a part of the problem? Uh, that one or two countries decide for the rest. And we are all together 28. And 28 is far more than two. Over the years, the EU, of course, evolved, but my feeling is that its leadership has not. Uh, Chancellor Merkel, the events uh, have placed the burden of leadership on your shoulders. Your critics, your critics say, however, and they may have a point, that you sometimes forget about, a di about the difference between leadership and dominance. And I get the impression that across the European Union, people are concerned about that distinction because it's become more and more a vital question. And that's part of the reason why we face this crisis over Europe's future. People are concerned that the viewpoint does not matter. Some are ignored, others are bullied, still others are vilified. People are concerned because they hear this deafening federalist rhetoric, not rooted in reality, and through that thin vein of rhetoric, they see a ruthless power play with President Hollande and Chancellor Merkel as major actors, more powerful than those who hold formal positions allegedly higher in the political hierarchy. Uh, Chancellor Merkel, you spent your early years in a communist country, so did I. I remember a saying uh, from the bad old days that communism, a system which courageously solves the problem it itself created. Uh, toute, uh, toute proportion gardée, uh, I think that could also be said about the European Union. We created the Euro system and since day one, we have been wrestling with the problems it generated. And solving those problems led to more dominance and more disregard for elementary rules of cooperation. And turning to the issue of migration and uh, refugees. Again, a similar story. Of course, the EU uh, did not uh, create the problem, but failed to identify it soon enough, and let me add, has not yet entirely succeeded in identifying it. Why inviting, I'm just wondering, why inviting the immigrants and then cancel the invitation? Why playing the cat and mouse uh, game with the Schengen procedures? Why, why, this, why this absolutely unbearable uh, uh, confusion of humanitarian, humanitarian, moral and political arguments that obscure the, the gravity of the crisis we are faced with? I mean, this is not the language of dialogue. I mean, this is the language to obscure things. We cannot really talk to one another using that kind of language. It's preaching, it's not a dialogue, it's preaching. And there has been a lot of preaching uh, this afternoon in this chamber, as a matter of fact, every day. Uh, so it was your uh, uh, decision to suspend the Schengen uh, rules and to open the German border. And it was your decision to close the border again. And as far as I know, you did not consult any government or any in, in, uh, European institution uh, for that matter. If this is not a proof of domin dominance, what is? If one wants to have another proof, look at what happened last month at the Home uh, Affairs Council. 
So this is not the right way of doing things. President Hollande, uh, Chancellor Mar Merkel, uh, let me finish by the following plea, if you will. I urge you to be more responsive to reality. The more European hubris is riding high, the more people are being left behind, not listened to, pushed outside the territory of respectability. This has lasted long enough and cannot go forever. The European politics needs less self-adoration, of which an abundant sample you uh, had today, but it needs more fresh air, clarity and fairness. Otherwise, the EU will be more and more looked at with reluctance, disdain, if not outright hostility. And we do not want it, do we?